Each year, Microsoft Research hosts hundreds of influential speakers from around the world, including leading scientists, renowned experts in technology, book authors, and leading academics, and makes videos of these lectures freely available. Okay, uh, so hello. Uh, my name is Christos uh, Thramboulidis, and this is joint work with Hassan Abassi and Babak Hasibi at Caltech. The title is Lasso with Nonlinear Measurements is Equivalent to One with Linear Measurements. So uh, we're interested in high dimensional data inference where the, the number of observations is uh, very large, but what is also very large is the number of uh, variables to be estimated. And in particular, this is very different than the classical way of thinking in statistics in which the number of observations is large, but the, the number of variables to be estimated is very small. And so the classical theory is not applicable here. In order to make this more concrete, think of the uh, linear noisy uh, measurement model, y equal ax plus uh, z. We want to recover x. So all this nice theory that we know from classical statistics about least squares, um, uh, m estimators, and so on, is simply not applicable in the high dimensional setting. And so it has only been very recently that under appropriate uh, randomness assumption on the measurement matrix, we are, we are able to give precise error guarantees on, on regularized M estimators. In particular, for example, we're able to answer how good is the estimate that we get from penalized least squares, uh, also known as generalized last. So here F is a structure inducing function associated with a, with a particular structure of the unknown vector. For example, if it's sparse, we may use the L1 norm and so on. And, and, and so this is, this is our recent work, but uh, this is not what this paper is about. In this paper, we go one step further and we ask what happens if we have uh, nonlinear measurements, okay? So nonlinearities may arise because of uncertainties in the underlying uh, model. So uh, we, we hit this uh, AI uh, transpose X naught with a nonlinear function G. But more interestingly, this, this, uh, this nonlinear function may represent some nonlinearity which, are, which uh, arises from, from design, okay? So for example, think of quantization. We may want to have one-bit measurements which are cheaper and easier to generate, and then we want to ask how do we recover X naught? And so in this paper, we ask whether we can use lasso to, to recover X naught. And, and this may sound uh, at the beginning as not a very good idea, just because lasso is not using explicitly the nonlinear function, but there is actually good reasons to ask this. First of all, we might not even know the nonlinearity, but even if we do so, and we would say be tempted to use some penalized uh, maximum likelihood estimator, then this might be computationally inefficient when compared to using any of the uh, lasso solvers. And the, the third point is that it actually turns out that the lasso performs well. Now, if you want to know how well, and if you want to know how, how it, this is related to linear measurements and how we use this to design optimal quantizers, Please stop by our poster, and I'm very happy to talk more about it. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> hi, so uh, my name is Jeff Bilms, and I'm going to be talking about submodular Hamming metrics. This is work with Jennifer Gillenwater, Rishabh Iyer, Bethany Lush, and Raul uh, Kadambi. And unfortunately, uh, Jenny isn't here uh, at NIPS uh, this year. So um, we're all familiar with the Hamming distance. It's something that's used and it's quite useful in a variety of applications in machine learning. Um, Hamming distance, however, has some shortcomings and that's trying to essentially be illustrated here by these figures where let's say that you have a set of four images, V, and you have several subsets, A, B, and C, and you were to measure the Hamming distance between say sets A and B and sets A and C, the Hamming distance would say that the distance between th these two sets are identical despite the fact that there's some sort of commonality amongst the subset of images in A and C, namely that they consist of uh, several uh, buildings. And one way of dealing that with that would be to think of Hamming distance as perhaps a, a sum of uh, differences of bit vectors and then maybe grouping together the bits that correspond to differences of buildings and not penalizing the building differences as much. And uh, another way of dealing with that would be to essentially do some sort of Mahalanobis distance type thing. But the problem with Mahalanobis distance is that it doesn't really offer any nice mathematical properties such as metricity. This would be discrete metricity over binary vectors. Now it turns out that if you impart a sub-additive function on top of the, the symmetric difference between the two sets A and B, that immediately offers a metric, a discrete metric, 
But the problem with that is that it doesn't give any nice computational properties. And so what we study in this particular paper are essentially a class of optimization problems on objectives that look like the following. We have essentially a set of Bs and a, a function f, which is a sum over of, the, of these metrics, these discrete metrics. And we are either interested in minimizing over A, which is kind of analogous to like k-means, except that this is sort of a discrete metric-based k-means. Or uh, if we were maximized over them, that's kind of analogous to diverse, diversity selection. So if it's a Hamming distance, then these are computationally tractable. If it's subadditive, so, we, so that we have a metric everywhere, then unfortunately it's inapproximable in the minimization case and very hard in the maximization case. However, if it's not only subadditive but also submodular, uh, like many problems that are associated with submodular functions, suddenly things start becoming very nice, yet you don't lose natura, uh, naturalness. And so what we study in this paper is a variety of different approximation bounds in the submodular case under very di different circumstances. If you're interested in seeing what all these numbers mean, then please come to poster 71. Thank you. Um, hi, I'm Martin Slavsky. This is joint work with Ping Li, Dan, and Rutgers. Um, so let me start by recalling the classical setup of compressed sensing, um, where the goal is to recover a high dimensional but self sparse signal from few possibly noisy linear measurements. So the idea of recovery from highly incomplete information is uh, subsequently um, we developed further in what is known as one-bit compressed sensing, where uh, in place of the linear measurements, one still only observe the signs. So in the literature as provided uh, results of the form, we need so and so many measurements to recover the signal up to a certain accuracy, or in the one-bit case, the normalized signal up to a certain accuracy. Um, so in our paper, we try to bridge the gap between these two cases. Um, by considering um, um, B-bit quantized measurements, that is, uh, on top of all linear measurements, we apply a quantization map that maps a real value to a code book of cardinality 2 to the B. So supposing that uh, we are free in choosing the parameter B, um, this yields a natural question, namely, uh, suppose we are given a fixed budget of bits B, um, what is the optimal trade-off between the total number of measurements and uh, the number of bits we use per measurement. So obviously this trade-off depends on the noise level, on the specifics of the quantization scheme, and the recovery algorithm. So uh, in our paper we concentrate on a single recovery algorithm that is uh, based on a general approach to nonlinear compressed sensing um, proposed in a paper of Plan Vershinin. The approach is very basic in that it minimizes a linear objective or a certain constraint set. So why do we call this uh, marginal regression or B-bit marginal regression? Well, it turns out that as B tends to infinity, it's not hard to show that the approach of plan Vecini is equivalent to marginal regression. So our analysis uh, proceeds basically as follows. We first separate the estimation of the direction, that is a normalized signal, and the norm of the signal. We then derive an asymptotically tight bound uh, on the L2 distance of our normalized signal and um, the marginal regression estimator, which you then decompose as a rate function R and as M, and another term that only depends on B. And we're then positioned to compare uh, B-bit me uh, measurements and B-prime bit measurements by evaluating the ratio of omega and omega B-prime. So out of this, we then get the following results, namely that B equal to one is optimal for estimating the direction um, that B equal to 2 is optimum for estimating the direction and the scale, that Lloyd Max quantization is an optimal quantization scheme, and we also do an extension to other noise models. So for more details, uh, you are encouraged to stop by at our poster. Thank you. Hi, everyone. My name is Ching Ching, and this is joint work with Sham Kakade. Um, the title of our paper is Super Resolution of the Grid. So what is super resolution? Super resolution is a technique to enhance the resolution of an image system. And it has wide applications in medical imaging, microscopy imaging, as well as speech recognition. Take microscopy image as an example. The image captures the emissions from a few isolated particles or points in the space. 
However, the diffraction of light blurs the image, and um, we need to denoise the image in order to accurately estimate the locations of the particles. In a slightly more abstract way, we assume the object xt can be represented by a sum of k isolated points in the d-dimensional space. In applications, the points can represent molecules or nine spectra in the speech. We also assume that we only have access to some coarse information about the underlying object in the form of um, band-limited and noise-distorted measurements. So the goal of super-resolution is to estimate the locations of the points, mu, um, with high resolution from the coarse measurements by taking advantage of the underlying sparsity of the signal xt. Intuitively, as the pairwise separation between the points becomes smaller, the problem becomes harder, and the complexity of the algorithm um, of the, in, to estimate the points should depend on the minimum separation defined as delta. I'll jump to present our result. We proposed an algorithm to solve the super-resolution problem, and we proved that in order to achieve the target accuracy in estimation, our algorithm runs faster and needs less number of measurements than existing algorithms. In particular, the existing algorithms either comes with no performance guarantee or uh, the complexity increases um, exponentially in the dimension of the system D and inverse proportional to the minimum separation delta. However, our algorithm, um, the complexity only depends quadratically in the dimensions of the system, and surprisingly, the complexity does not depend on the minimum separation at all. And the key of our, uh, the key of our algorithm is just to go off the grid. For more details about our work, please stop by the poster tonight. Thank you. Hi, uh, I'm Zoltan Savo from the Gatsby Unit University College London. Uh, this is a joint work with uh, Barat Juperumbudur uh, from the Pennsylvania State University Department of Statistics. Uh, the topic is optimal rates uh, for random free features. Uh, kernel techniques represent and uh, widely applicable uh, uh, and popular uh, technique uh, to capture um, uh, complex uh, relations. Uh, typical applications of uh, kernel machines uh, are tasks uh, which can be ex expressed in terms of function values and function derivatives. Just to give you uh, two quick uh, examples, uh, kern uh, kernel reg regression uh, is an example for the first case uh, where we have input-output pairs and we want to capture this relation uh, from a Hilbert specific Hilbert space determined by a kernel. Infinite dimensional exponential family fitting is a uh, is an instance uh, for the second problem, which can be expressed in terms of uh, kernel, uh, kernels and uh, kernel derivatives. Unfortunately, uh, this flexibility of uh, kernel uh, methods has a price. They typically uh, scale uh, reasonably poorly. In order to mitigate uh, this problem, several approaches uh, have been uh, suggested in the literature, such as incomplete Cholesky decomposition, Nystrom uh, methods, sketching, or random Fourier features, which is uh, the focus of our paper. So uh, any continuous shift invariant uh, kernel can be written as the Fourier transform of a uh, probability measure by the uh, Bockmann theorem. This is the idea of the random Fourier feature to replace uh, this uh, integral, this expectation, with an empirical average. Uh, by the uh, constructed finite dimensional representation, this random Fourier feature trick enables one to uh, rewrite the problem in the primal and apply fast uh, linear techniques. Uh, there exist uh, theoretical guarantees uh, for the approximation uh, property of the uh, random Fourier feature based uh, kernel technique, or kernel, uh, on a, in uniform sense on a compact set S. Uh, the bound uh, depends linearly uh, on the diameter of the set, and uh, as one over square root of number of Fourier features uh, uh, up to logarithmic uh, factors. Uh, 
In this paper, we derived uh, finite sample uniform guarantees uh, for, uh, fin uh, for uh, this random Fourier feature-based uh, kernel approximation. And instead of the diameter of the M, uh, we get a bound which depends logarithmically uh, on the uh, diameter of S. This uh, rate uh, is also apt optimal in asymptotic sense. We also have finite sample LP guarantees and uh, bounds for uh, kernel derivatives. If you are interested in the details uh, or have any questions, our poster is uh, 95. Thanks. Um, hi. I present uh, TopK Multiclass SVM, which is a uh, joint work with Matthias Hein at Saarland University and Bernd Schiele at the Max Planck Institute uh, for Informatics. The main motivation for our work are difficult classification problems with significant class overlap. For example, if you look at the four images on this slide, they all look similar and one might expect that they belong to the same class, but the ground truth annotation says that these are examples of four different classes. This is what we call ambiguous classes, and they typically appear in problems with a large number of categories, which we can expect to be even more common in future. Um, note that this is not just a few outliers due to label noise, because some images are inherently multi-label. For example, there may be a river in a park. Um, but also, there is not always a clear cut between the classes, like between the pond and the lake. In that case, it is um, sometimes difficult even for humans to guess correctly on the first attempt. Therefore, it makes sense um, to allow a few guesses. Um, this leads us to the top K error, which counts a mistake only if all K predictions were wrong. Um, this is a popular performance measure, uh, which is used in benchmarks like ImageNet, so why not optimize it directly? Um, to this end, we propose an extension of the multi-class SVM of Kramer and Zinger. Um, so instead of looking just at the maximum prediction score uh, as done in their formulation, uh, we take the average of the K largest predictions and threshold it at zero. We call it the top K hinge loss um, because it is a convex upper bound on the direct uh, non-convex top K uh, uh, loss, uh, which you can see at the bottom of the slide, and because it reduces to the uh, multi-class loss uh, of Kramer and Zinger for K equals one. For training, um, we propose an efficient optimization scheme based on stochastic dual coordinate ascent. To optimize the dual objective, um, we need the projection onto what we call the top K simplex. Uh, as you can see, it reduces to the standard simplex for k equals 1, um, and for k larger than 1, uh, there is a non-trivial upper bound on uh, every dual variable. Um, one of our main technical contributions is an efficient algorithm for projecting uh, onto the top k simplex. Experiments on uh, five uh, data sets, including large-scale ones, uh, show consistent improvements in top k accuracy and sometimes even in top 1 performance. So uh, please come see us at poster number 61. Thank you. Each year, Microsoft Research hosts hundreds of influential speakers from around the world, including leading scientists, renowned experts in technology, book authors, and leading academics, and makes videos of these lectures freely available.